Um, she's the author of numerous research articles and has edited multiple books, including Attachment in Middle Childhood, Family and Peers, Linking Two Social Worlds, and Latino Children and Families in the United States. Her research explores how and why children's relationships with attachment figures influence their social and emotional development, with a focus on the later middle childhood period. Her recent work has documented how attachment is related to children's emotion regulation. Further, this research tests whether individual differences in emotion regulation can explain why securely attached children form more competent relationships with peers and are less likely to show signs of psychopathology. A specific focus of her recent work is developing and testing models which can help us understand how attachment in combination with other risk and protective factors may predict the development of anxiety symptoms. Please welcome Dr. Kearns. Heidi for that introduction and for inviting me to participate in what's been a really wonderful series, um, all very stimulating papers. And I'll have to say a special thank you to Dina for setting me up on the topic of my talk, which as you can see is about parent-child relationships. So in my lab, what, one of the things we've been interested in is doing some work on parent-child relationship contributions to the development of anxiety, including social anxiety. And um, just to kind of give you the big picture first, we're really interested in trying to look at parent-child relationships in the context of other factors. We know from the last two decades of research in developmental psychopathology, very rarely do we see disorder associated with single factors. And so we're really thinking about in our work that parent-child relationships are going to be one piece of the puzzle in trying to explain the development of anxiety problems in children. I hope, though, that by the end of the talk, you'll agree with me that it is important to, cons to include parent-child relationships in our models of anxiety, that, they are, that while they're one piece of the puzzle, they're perhaps an important piece of the puzzle. So in the talk today, um, there's a number of things that I want to cover. One is that I'm going to talk a bit about the evidence for the link between parent-child relationships and anxiety. And um, one thing that's a little bit different about our approach compared to some other work like that was just illustrated in the last talk is that we're looking at anxiety symptoms, kind of the whole full range of anxiety symptoms rather than clinical disorders. So I just want to make that clear at the beginning. And I'm going to be talking both about um, anxiety symptoms in general, but also consistent with the theme for the symposium, talking also specifically about social anxiety. So I'll um, cue you in when I'm sort of talking about each of those. So we'll review some of the evidence, including telling you a little bit about some of our recent work, some of the findings that have really looked at not only our parent-child relationships related to the development of anxiety in children, but um, do they provide some sort of a unique contribution to explaining anxiety. And then I'm going to move to a, a different question because, you know, you've seen the title of the talk, so you've probably already guessed that I'm going to tell you that parent-child relationships are related to anxiety, otherwise my talk would be about over. Um, so once we've talked about how they're related, I want to talk a little bit about why might they be related. That's really just the start of a whole research agenda, and knowing they're related, how can we explain those linkages. So I'm going to talk about that question for a bit. And then I'm going to shift to answering a slightly different question. Instead of talking about um, how parent, uh, instead of talking about the fact parent-child relationships are related and can predict anxiety symptoms, I want to talk about whether they might also be important for helping us to explain changes over time in terms of growth of anxiety symptoms in children. And finally, I want to try to tie things together a bit at the end by showing you a model that I've developed with one of my graduate students where we're trying to develop a heuristic model to capture a number of the factors that might be important in terms of trying to explain the development of anxiety. OK, 
Okay, well, uh, I just wanted to step back for a minute from the topic of anxiety and just sort of indicate why is it that we came at this whole question starting by looking at parent-child relationships. Well, it has to do with the fact that, you know, in addition to the fact that I'm trained in developmental psychology, just that there is this broader literature that I wanted to mention at the outset in which people have looked at parent-child relationships in, in relation to children's social and emotional competencies. And when you think about anxiety, of course, we're talking about people who are feeling distress, they're having dysregulated emotions, and often that dysregulation is occurring in connection with social situations. And so if we step back a moment and look at the broader literature, there is quite a bit of work over the last um, particularly 10 or 15 years all on the question of how are, might parents be important in terms of teaching children uh, about how to regulate and express emotions. And so I listed up here names of the few people, few of the people who've contributed in this area. But a lot of this work has looked at things like um, um, how might parents' reactions to their children's expressions of emotion be important for determining how they're going to react in the future. Uh, it's looked at things like advice giving that parents have about how to cope with situations. Uh, there's also some interesting work about parent-child dialogues and how the way in which parents discuss and talk about emotions may send important messages to children about how to understand and regulate their emotions. So there's this whole nice now rich research tradition suggesting parent-child relationships are important in terms of understanding children's regulation and expression of emotion. And there's also this whole um, rather large literature now on how parent-child relationships might be important for understanding children's development of social skills and um, the quality of their social relationships with peers. So for example, that the way in which uh, parents play with their children, may teach children particular kinds of skills about how to initiate interaction or regulate emotion that may be important for peer relationships. Or that children form secure attachments may be advantaged in terms of their peer relationships. So this is just to knit my specific question to there is a broader literature that's looked more generally at parent-child relationships in relation to children's social and emotional competencies. But now moving specifically to the question of parent-child relationships and anxiety, either symptoms or disorders, there is also um, a, a fairly good-sized literature looking at how qualities of parent-child relationships might be related to anxiety symptoms or disorders in children. And most of this research has taken one of two perspectives. There's quite a few studies now that have looked at uh, parenting in relation to anxiety symptoms. And in these studies of parenting, people tend to study one of two broad dimensions of parenting. One is what you could call a dimension of acceptance rejection. And so the high end of this dimension is defined by things like um, being sensitive to your child, being warm to your child, being uh, accepting of their initiations and so on. Uh, the low end would be defined by things like hostility or criticism. And a second broad dimension in the parenting literature is one uh, which is defined on the high end by control, things like being um, uh, using psychological control, uh, and on the low end, things like uh, uh, allowing autonomy granting, allowing your child to have some say. It sort of captures a sense of what is the degree to which you allow your child to be their own individual and to express themselves. So I'll talk in just a minute that, about what we've learned about parenting and how it's related to anxiety. And the second tradition that I'm going to talk about today is work that's used attachment theory to try to frame questions about parent-child relationships and anxiety. So this work has asked how is the security of a child's attachment uh, related to uh, whether or not they're likely to develop anxiety later. <laughs> 